welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Brie and this is my adventure on the internet. So today we are going to be a, doing a Disney related video. I'm going to be showing you guys a makeup look, a few hairstyles, and some outfit choices for traveling to the Walt Disney Parks or the Disneyland Parks. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop right into this. Okay, so we are going to start with the makeup. As you can see, I did one eye off camera that way we're not sitting here forever and you can kind of reference, you know, what we're doing. So my like plan for makeup when I go to the parks is keeping it light and keeping it natural. There's the biggest things that I look for in, you know, doing my makeup for the parks because it's hot, it's probably gonna rain, and you just want to make sure that you don't have like just makeup pouring down your face when you're sweating or if it rains. But I also like to look a little bit more put together in case there's pictures because my family and my friends and I, we always take pictures. We're always doing photo pass, meeting characters, various things like that, you know. Gotta make sure you look good on Snapchat. I mean, for Instagram, everything like that. And of course, I usually vlog when I go to the parks. So I like to make sure that at least I will be looking decent on camera or in photos. So, like I said, very light, very natural. No, nothing too crazy. So we're just gonna get started and do this eye. So the first thing that I did was tight line my eyes. As you guys know, I'm a huge fan of tight lining my eyes. I think it makes, you know, your lashes look fuller. You can kind of see the difference here. Um, it makes your lashes look fuller and there's no need to use false lashes to receive, to achieve that false, or that full look. So all I'm gonna do is lift my eye and apply eyeliner right here under my eyelashes. And I know it looks crazy, but it works. And you can already see that my lashes look a little bit fuller. So basically, that's what it looks like. I know that looked really creepy, but it helps. And of course, I'm using a waterproof eyeliner there. That's the biggest tip I can give you guys is to use waterproof makeup, whether it be waterproof mascara, waterproof eyeliner, waterproof foundation, anything like that, it's gonna help. So now we're going to be using the Tartlet Tease Palette. You guys know this is a favorite of mine. And we're going to be dipping into this kind of light pinky cream shade here. It's called Wink. So I'm going to apply this all over my lid as a nice base shade. Kind of even out the skin tone. And just add a little bit of color, nothing too major. Very simple. So now using the same brush, just on the other side, I'm going to dip into this chocolate brown here called Heartbreaker, and I'm going to very lightly apply that to my outer corner and crease, just to add a little bit of dimension to the look, just to, you know, because this looks very natural, but I want something a little bit more, you know, a little more defined, a little more dimension in my eyeshadow. You can, of course, leave it just like this, though, if you want something super natural. So, I'm just going to apply it to the outer corner there and work it up into my crease a little bit. And it's going to look messy at first, don't worry. We will be blending it out here in just a moment. So, very messy. But now we're going to take a blending brush and just blend it all out. you can go in and adjust it. I'm going to take my ring finger with a little bit of that first shade we used and just apply it to the middle of my lid and blend it in there. There we go. And see it's very natural, very easy to do. Okay. I had to adjust my lighting. It was looking a little pink because of the way like my window is set up over there. But you can see very natural, very easy to do. And then using that blending brush, we're gonna take this shade here called Whisper. It's a very nice, very light cream shade. And just apply it on the brow bone and in the inner corner. Just 
just for a little bit of highlight. So now that we're done with the eyeshadow, we're gonna go in with a felt tip eyeliner. I like using a felt tip eyeliner and adding a little bit of a thin line of eyeliner to the top. You don't have to. It depends on how, you know, how many steps you wanna take, how natural you want the, it to look. So we're just going to apply this to the top lash line. it's not too thick or dramatic so. there we go so as you can see it just adds a little bit of definition to the eyes just kind of draws draws the eyes together the final step to the eyes is mascara. Again, using a waterproof mascara. And this is one, this is the CoverGirl Lash Blast Fusion. So it creates a little bit more natural of a look. Nothing too crazy. It adds just the right amount of volume and definition. extremely natural with just a little bit of definition to the eyes so now moving on to the face and lips of the look um, biggest tips here sunscreen 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 always apply SPF to your face especially if you're gonna be out in the parks out in the hot Sun in the direct sunlight like that because your face is going to get a whole lot of light on it and you don't want all those UV rays to be you know burning your skin or anything and my second big tip there is moisturizer I've already got moisturizer and everything on so you're not gonna see me apply those on camera but if I was headed to the parks I would put you know sunscreen and moisturizer on my face um, my face gets really dry you know just throughout the day and being in you know the queue lines for the attractions and the shows and everything the air in those areas does tend to be a little bit drier so just kind of keep that in mind obviously everybody's skin is different so it's gonna be reacting differently but two more biggest tips there sunscreen and moisturizer so I'm gonna keep things very simple for the face because I don't want a whole lot of heavy setting makeup, you know, caked on my face. And I'm gonna be applying some concealer under my eyes and on any spots and then just setting it with powder. Very simple things. So we're just going to take our concealer here. This is the NYX HD Photogenic Concealer. I really like this concealer. It's nice and high coverage, so. triangles under my eyes to cover those areas and I'll be covering up any spots that I might have typically my chin under my nose and on my forehead are where my spots typically are so and I just use the same color concealer for all of that I don't do a whole lot of you know lighter concealer here or darker concealer there or anything and I'm just gonna be taking a damp makeup sponge and I'm gonna blend this all out. So, the great thing about doing these steps of just like very light makeup is that your skin's gonna look really good for pictures but it's not gonna be all caked on and heavy to where you're sweating it all off by the end of the day. My lighting just doesn't want to agree with me today. I need to fix this lighting. Okay, this is the best I could do with the lighting to make it look at least decent. It's probably too bright right now. I will figure it out later. But that is pretty much the blended out concealer. I went ahead and just finished 
blending it out, making sure it looks even and everything, just covering up all those spots. So now I'm going to be taking a powder. I use a loose face powder. I don't have any compact powders with me or like in my collection currently. So I've just been using the Airspun powder. I know this is really popular across the beauty community. So it is also very messy. So just keep that in mind. But you can see it's a nice loose powder. Now I'm just going to tap a little bit into the lid. Just because I don't want a whole lot. Just a little bit in there. See, I'm already making a mess of it. That's nothing new. <laughs> I'm just gonna take a big fluffy brush and just swirl it in the powder, tap off the excess, and set that concealer I just applied. And I like to concentrate it, especially on the under eye concealer, because I want that to stay put the most. And around the rest of my face and my neck, I just kind of swirl the powder in a circle, just keeping it very light. There we go. My hair's making its way over. So that is pretty much it for the face. I don't apply a whole lot of, you know, bronzer, blush, highlight, anything like that. If you want to, you're more than welcome to. Go right ahead. Some people do, some people don't. I personally just don't. Because like I said, I don't want a whole bunch of cake to make up on my face. So biggest thing there. And then when it comes to lips, sometimes I'll apply lipstick or lip gloss or anything, but typically I just apply some sort of chapstick or lip balm. This is the Nivea Lip Butter. I know these were popular a few years ago. I still have mine. I still love it. And this is the Caramel Cream Kiss one. This, if I can get it open, is a like pot, uh, potted lip balm. <laughs> I can't get it open. There we go. So it's just like that. Um, I will use any lip balm. This is just kind of the one that I grab and I just take my ring finger, swirl it in there, and just apply it. So, I typically don't like to apply a lot of like lipsticks or anything because I don't wanna to have to carry an extra, you know, lip product around when I can just carry a chapstick because I always have chapstick on me. My concealer just fell. That's what that was. Um, so applying the lip balm is just really simple, really easy. I have naturally pink lips, so like I don't apply lipstick or lip balm very, or like lip color very often. But when I do, I will keep that with me when I go to Disney as well. So this here's the completed makeup. As you can see, it's super natural, super easy to wear. So and it's not going to wash off or fall, fall off. Words are hard. It's not going to sweat off or, you know, run off your face very easily. And it's not going to feel too cakey or too heavy, which is the biggest thing for me, as I've said multiple times. So, okay, moving on to hair. So I'm not one that I do my hair very often. As you guys see, I typically have my hair down or straight. It's naturally straight, so I don't really do much to it. But if I am going to do my hair for the parks, I'm gonna show you guys two different ways that I typically would do my hair for the parks. So you need a brush and a set of ears for the first one. So I just go in and I part my hair. So I just part my hair kind of by eyeballing it. I don't really use any sort of technique. Brush it out really good. And put some ears on. This is the most common way that I wear my hair to the parks. It's just hair down, ears on. Very simple. So this is look number one. Very easy. Um, you can just throw on a pair of ears and you're good to go. That's the easiest way to do your hair for going to a Disney park. So now we're going to move on to the second hairstyle. Okay. So for the second hairstyle that I will do pretty often, you're going to need a brush, a hair tie, 
and a hat. So this is my Disneyland 60th hat. You guys have seen this in my ears and hats collection video. I will grab any baseball cap. This is just the one that I found, you know, offhand. So all I'm gonna do is brush my hair, make sure there's no tangles. And if you don't typically wear baseball caps, I recommend putting it on to see where it sits on your head, where this little opening sits. I don't even know if that was in frame. Where this little opening here sits on the back of your head and then doing your ponytail to that. I know pretty much where it sits, so all I do is just grab my hair right about where it would sit. I will turn to the side so you can see this. Just to that point. And I'm a stickler, like I'm a perfectionist when it comes to my ponytails and hats, just because I don't want my hair looking crazy and like sticking out too much. So I will brush the ponytail and make it look even and nice and tight. So there we go. Here we go. We're going to take our hair tie. Tie our hair off. And I tie mine pretty tight. That's just natural for me because I have so much hair that if I don't tie my hair ties tight, it won't stay. And just put it up in a ponytail. And I have all these little baby hairs. So I just like to slick them back as much as I can. Sometimes I'll use hairspray and be, you know, super strategic about it, but I'm not all the time. I just slick those back, take my hat, and I put my hand in here. And then slide the ponytail through. And then position the hat. And like I said, I like to go in adjust it, make sure it's where I like it to sit. This hat's not as easy to do this with because it's a different type of um, fastener. Fastener? Is that the right word? I don't even know if that's the right word. But there you go. Super easy. And this is going to protect your face from the sun and also keep your hair up out of your way. Typically, I would do this with a hat that has like the button closure or like a velcro closure that way this one has it yeah like a velcro closure like this that way i can open it up and shape it around the ponytail so i'll show you how that looks it's gonna look crazy right now because i just took a hat off but you just take this and i will use the hat to slick back my hair ponytail up and then velcro it. And that way you can make sure the hat is tight and sitting exactly where you want it. So there we go. You can tighten the ponytail, you can pull little pieces out. I have little baby hairs right here that like to fly out on their own can see so sometimes I will pull those forward and just add a little bit here or if I don't want any hair in my face those just stay slicked back and there you go that is another common way that I would put my hair up for Disney all right now that we've talked about makeup for the parks, hair for the parks, we're gonna talk about outfits for the park. So I'm just gonna show you guys a bunch of different outfit options that I typically wear to the park or various things that I've seen people wear to the park. So without further ado, let's try on some clothes.
guys have now seen a makeup look, hairstyles, and a few different outfit choices for when you travel to the Disney parks. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for my next video, and I will talk to you guys very soon. Bye!